join me as we talk all things true crime. And shattered. The parents have called me out of us, but the mother has went for a wall, came out, now they can't find her. Turn it over to another agency. Chad, where are Lori's kids? They've been missing for four months. You have nothing to say? Four were stabbed multiple times and were likely asleep during the attack. Some had defensive wounds. Most of them had just like one that was the lethal uh, stab wound. Oh, what a tangled web we weave. Once I told a lie, I mean, I told my family, I, I had to keep lying. What's your name? Is it Dean? We haven't cleared anybody. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me tonight for a special ATS News live stream. We are covering a case that has been around for 29 years, and we have new information, not really new information that much, but just different perspective from a different side of this story. Every story has two sides. And if you followed the Selena case, if you know who Selena is, then you know pretty much that tragically she was shot and killed by um, Yolanda Salvador. And she was a manager for the fashion boutique that she had and also the president of Selena's fan club. So make, I just want to make sure you guys can hear me. Hello, Crime Sleuthin and everyone else who is here. Hi, Zoe. All right. So thank you so much, Missy Minnie. This is sort of like my Selena-inspired top. I'm glad you like it. Um, I never really get to wear it. And then I seen Selena wearing something very similar in some photos as I was editing. And I was like, oh, let me just wear that tonight. Hello, Johnny and everyone else who's here. So this new docu-series came out on Sunday, actually over the weekend. I think they did one episode on Saturday and one on Sunday. The first one was around hour, 45 minutes. The second one was around 40 minutes. Um, so pretty long. I think that it could have been summed up, honestly, in just a part one. And pretty much, I think that if you don't feel like sitting through the whole docu-series, then you're at the perfect place because we're just going to break down and summarize what the series pretty much was about, what was said in it. And I see everyone joining. Thank you so much for being here. A lot of Selena fans already. So she died March 31st, 1995. I was seven years old. I had not yet really grasped um, this case until I was a little bit older. I had her CD, the American um, soundtrack that came out after she died, which tragically she never got to see that her um, song Dreaming of You hit number one on the charts after she was killed. And hello, Marar, everyone who's joining, Tony, I see you all. I'm so glad you're here. Hit that like button if you haven't already. And oh, thank you, Esther. So I just want to play the clips that I've put together. It's going to start off with some photos of her. It's going to transition into these new voicemails that came out through the series. So when I said that there was a little bit of new stuff, um, hearing the voicemails from Selena to Yolanda, I thought was very interesting. Um, again, these were captured on Yolanda's home recording device. So back in the day when we had... Um, tape recorders that recorded voice memos and voicemails that people would call and leave for you. Gosh, what were they called back then? I keep calling a voicemail and I'm like, no, wait, that's like new age talk with, with cell phones. What were they called back then? Answering machine of message on or answering machine. So Yolanda's family is in this docuseries. Um, her nieces, people close to her kind of speak on behalf of Yolanda. Yolanda is also in it. There's also the um, the first responders on scene. So the guy who was in the hostage recovery um, group is it makes um, comments on that. I have notes on my phone, so we'll go through the notes and we will also listen to the voice messages. Yeah, answering machine messages. <laughs> That's what it is. So I thought it was interesting to hear. I clipped them and I hope you guys like the little things I put together. 
By the way, Yolanda is still claiming that Selena had an affair with a doctor who performed plastic surgery on her. And apparently this doctor was deposed under oath, obviously, by the prosecution. And he claims that there was no affair. And they, the defense decided not to call him to the trial. Years later, he has come out and he said, yes, this was an affair that took place and I don't regret it. So I have a little bit of his interview from a few years ago commenting on that. So why exactly did the doctor kind of flip flop his story? I don't really know. I'm still trying to figure that out. So I was hoping I could get some clarity with you guys. And then what else do I have clipped? Uh, Yolanda, one of Yolanda's first interviews, but let's get into it. Thank you so much for being here, guys. So here we go. Usted que era su amiga y su confidente, la not Okay, so some of this obviously is in Spanish. Um, so the interviewer says, you were her friend and her confidant. Did you notice that she was in love with the doctor? And again, this is not from the new series, but she's still spinning this narrative that they very much were having an affair. And um, at the time, she was in her early 20s and he was in his early 50s. He had children, um, obviously, with another woman. He was married. She obviously was married. Um, they met at a, one of her concerts. So not only did Yolanda kind of meet um, Selena at one of her concerts, but this doctor brings his daughters to see her. They go backstage to get um, an autograph. And then he claims that it was love at first sight. And um, like I said, when he was deposed under oath, he claimed that their relationship was strictly business. And then years later, he comes out, obviously not under oath anymore. And he says, yes, this affair took place. So again, I don't really know what to think about this affair. It doesn't really come into play in the grand scheme of things, like when we're talking about the, the case and why Yolanda did what she did. Um, they didn't really bring out much more evidence in the series based on this whole affair, except there was a little note that Yolanda's family has that they showed on the docuseries that pretty much was from the doctor, allegedly to Selena. And it said something along the lines of you light up my life, um, always will be your, your friend. I love you. Something along those lines. Very like you would be kind of questionable or it would look questionable if you were married and you stumbled upon that and it was um, your spouse and you're reading it from somebody else. I definitely did. I was intrigued by it. I was like, Oh, interesting. You know, um, you know, she was just a very lovely person, very friendly and charismatic. Um, and in fact, when the series starts off, Yolanda is obviously behind bars and she's speaking. She starts talking about Selena and like when they met and instantly I just started thinking like, this woman is talking about her as if she's like reminiscing about a loved um, someone that she was in love with 
the, when you reminisce about when you first met like your husband or wife, or think about somebody who's like the love, the love of your life. That's how Yolanda started off this new series talking about Selena. That's my opinion. That's how I interpret it. Her tone, the way she just kind of like drifted off into this place that, you know, she was just like, um, fantasizing about like when she first saw her on stage and, and her energy. And yeah, it was very creepy. It was. And um, I said to Roxanne, my my moderator, I don't know if she's here yet. I'm like, I get the vibe, like even in the 90s um, interviews and early 2000s before this docu docu series came out, like Yolanda, she very much is it's deeper than just an obsessed fan, because I think that we all have heard about this case and we all were, oh, yes, yeah, she was obsessed with her. I think it's much deeper than that. Like, it's not even just you know, like John Lennon was killed by an obsessed fan. There's other cases where people were killed by an obsessed fan. I feel like Yolanda was like deeply in love with Selena on a romantic level. And I think she was either um, upset that it wasn't reciprocated or once everything was falling apart and she knew their friendship was over, she couldn't let Selena live without her. Like if you're going to live um, a life without me, I I'm not letting that happen. You're going to die. Like it, you're either going to be with me or without me. And I feel like that that's the level of obsession that Yolanda had for her. So back to this, she says. Estaba enamorada del médico. Yo te digo una cosa. Ella. I'll tell you something. She. <laughs> estaba was, totalmente enamorada. Was totally in love with Dr. Martinez. Now, this is the part of the story that I don't know if, if maybe. Because she had, um, Selena, even through her autopsy, they, they talk about um, bruising on her body that was from the liposuction that this doctor had just performed on Selena. So they had just gone to Mexico, come back, and it was after this procedure that she had done. So when they make notes of things, that's the bruising that's kind of referenced. So it was very fresh. Yolanda was with her um, every time that she visited Dr. Martinez. Now, it makes me wonder if there wasn't an affair and it was really just um, Yolanda seeing um, Selena kind of be flirtatious with a male or maybe the, the male, you know, touching her in the exam room or something like that rubbed Yolanda the wrong way because Selena's father even comes out in interviews and says there were points where I started noticing that even when fans started getting too close, Yolanda took it upon herself to to keep them back herself and like be the barrier in between Selena and her fan, kind of like what a bodyguard would do. And Abraham claims that he told um, Yolanda, like, that's not your job. That's not your role. We have bodyguards. We have security. Um, you know, you don't need to be like that. And Selena was a very young, naive, not in a bad way, but just very much. I think she was too trusting. And too trusting in the sense that um, that's what people really loved about her. Like fans that met her were like, she's so down to earth. She's just like us. She came from nothing and now she's this, but she never forgot where she came from. You know, those things are said over and over in documentaries about Selena. And that I think was also her downfall because Yolanda preyed on that. And at one point in this docu-series, Yolanda talks about how when she was in her 20s and the young woman, because she didn't meet Selena till she was in her early 30s. She was 34 when the crime took place. So when she was in her 20s, she said that she never got to go out and like party and do that whole like party college scene. She took it very serious. Um, she says, hi, Roxanne. She says that she um, got right into her career and I wonder if there's a part of Yolanda that have you ever heard of somebody having like a midlife crisis because they never really did have that time to rebel like the, in the in your teens and in your 20s college time, like perfect time to kind of party and get that out of your system. It seems to me like Yolanda was very much structured and like all about business. And then it caught up to her when she was in her 30s. Once she meets Selena, she's very much like infatuated with her and she starts seeing herself as like part of something bigger. And she found like this new identity in herself 
that, you know, Selena, she needs me and I'm there for her and I'm very important. And she would have no life without this whole connect connection to Selena. So I just thought it was interesting that she kind of talks about how she never really got to go out and party and stuff. So it makes me wonder if like this is the first time that she's had this like type of like heartbreak and stage in her life that like you're being rejected. Um, I really do think that there was some sort of romantic feelings that Yolanda had for Selena that was not reciprocated. Um, let's see what else she has to say. You couldn't say anything to her. She was pressured because... Dr. Martinez le dijo, oh, yes. Dr. Martinez said, hey, leave with me to Brazil. ¿Te vienes conmigo para así? O oh. oh, suelto la lengua. Or I tell everybody. And now this ultimatum and like storyline that Yolanda is saying is just like, that makes no sense. So he was pressuring Selena to like move away with him and start a new life or he was going to tell everybody like it just doesn't make sense. And Yolanda keeps claiming over all these years and even to this day that she has a diary of Selena's that will prove that this affair took place um, and that she has a sex tape of them. And only she knows where it is. And um, executive producers from shows have like tried to uh, track this down and her lawyers along the way have tried to, you know, get... Um, this evidence that she claims is part of her appeal process. She's up for parole next year. Um, she got life in prison with the chance of parole at 30 years. So that'll be next year. Uh, I really don't think that she's going to get paroled. But then again, one of the Manson women got paroled last year. So anything's possible. Uh, it is a different state than the Manson killings, Texas versus Cal California. So who knows? But either way, it's just present what you're talking about. It's been decades that she's kind of been hanging this information over everyone's head. And this is the doctor, of course, with Todo lo que, lo que se hizo. Now, this interview was done in the 2000s. Um, I want to say 2012, but don't 100% quote me on this. He says everything that happened between us, again, when he was deposed by the prosecution, he claimed no, strictly business, no affair. Then changes his story, changes his tune along the way, not really sure why. Um, he claims that he never trusted Yolanda. So it's interesting that now all of a sudden he's kind of like not siding her, like on her side, but kind of... Um, validating her saying that there was an affair. Now, again, this affair, like it really is neither here nor there. Like when it comes down to the fact that Yolanda, you pulled the trigger, you know, and, and people ask her if you were so upset about all this, why didn't you shoot the doctor? You know? And she just claims, I didn't even mean to shoot Selena. You know, it was an accident. So fue realmente porque existió Everything that happened between us was because there was love. Un amor este que no te puedes. That you can't put into words. No lo puedes decir con, con palabras a veces, sino que a pesar de que fue muy. Even though it was short. Corto. Hubo una entrega. We gave ourselves to each other completely. Completa. Yo estaba dispuesto. I was willing at that moment to change my life for her. En ese momento a tener un cambio de vida por ella. Sí. Sí, sí. Yes, definitely. Definitivo. Y no me arrepiento. And I don't regret it. Bueno. So now we're going to get into the 911 call from that tragic day. And then once we get through the 911 call, it'll transition into a very um, old interview of Yolanda. I want to say it was one of her first ones after her conviction. And then we can get into my notes regarding um, the docu-series and kind of elaborate further on my opinion of it. I honestly thought it was, it was interesting. I think, like I said, there's always two sides. I think that what the um, prosecution kind of laid out is very, very close to the truth. Um, I do think that there might be a mix of both their stories combined 
And that's where the truth lies. So when the prosecution says she was mad that she was being fired, so she pulled the gun out. I think that that seems sort of accurate. And then you start hearing about how Yolanda actually had a resignation letter. And even Yolanda's husband, who is viewed here right now on the screen, says that this letter took place um, about 15 days before her death, 16, I think, uh, and and Selena seen it and um, they worked things out. So she sends this resignation letter around March 15th and says, I can no longer work for you anymore because of the way I'm being treated by your family. Now, that was after Yolanda's been confronted by Abraham and Selena about money that's been missing. And oh, thank you so much, Johnny, for some tea and tea all around for everyone. And I think that the whole story of like she was being fired. So that's why she did it. I think that that is kind of true. I also think that it was a, a, a an event that Yolanda was mad that Selena kind of wanted her around just to help her with like her boutique and stuff. Like I think what had happened was she gets confronted about stealing stuff and is told you're out you cannot come over here anymore she, she shows up to the record um studio the next day after this confrontation and she's kicked off the property and she's told we're done our our connection is done you can no longer talk to selena and then that's when she buys the gun so she buys the gun and then it comes out that selena and yolanda were actually still in, in um connect they were still conversing and I think what had happened was Selena realized, like, I can, I'm not ready to let her go as a worker because I have all this stuff lining up, fashion show, her boutiques, all these deadlines lining up, as well as the album. And I need her. I, I actually need her so that I can be successful. So I think that while Abraham was saying, no, you're done here, I think that Selena kind of smoothed things over with her and was like, realize like I do kind of still need her though. Like I still need you. Um, please work for me still. And I think that's when Yolanda returns the gun because then she returns it. Now, did she buy that gun with the intention of shooting Selena? Maybe. I also think that it's possible the story about her with it to her own head almost sounds like it could be believable too. Like she thought that if she did that in front of Selena, Selena would come crawling back to her like, please, no, like, I don't want it to be like that. Don't shoot yourself, you know? So I wonder if it really was the gun was purchased to to um, kill her or was it to kind of add like a manipulation, like, please don't end things between us, our friendship. I'll end myself if you do so. And then Selena, before it gets to that, says, I need you still. So please help me with my boutiques. Um, we don't have to kind of end things yet. And so she returns the gun. And then it kind of happens again. Selena is kind of at this point where she's like, well, you know, if you're going to be still in my, my business, I'd like to see those business documents. Um, because there was stuff that kind of just needed to be I's dotted and T's crossed. And she needed to see the paperwork and everything. I mean, Yolanda had access to her business accounts. Yolanda had access to Selena's house. Um, she was very much trusted with things. And all Selena wanted was some sort of paper trail and, and kind of receipts. And then I think that that's when she realized, Yolanda realized, like, she's not going to back down. They're going to find out I really did steal from her. Um, I'm buying that gun again because I'm desperate. Either they're going to come after me and I'm going to have to, you know, say that I'm going to hurt myself and they'll like feel bad and still be there for me. Or I'm going to end things because she's not going to be in this world without me by her side. So those are my opinions on the gun being bought and then returned and then bought again. Um, and I think that the truth kind of lies in between this whole she says that she put the gun to her head. I don't think that she accidentally shot Selena. I think that once she realized Selena wasn't falling for this like whole like, don't leave me or I'll end myself type of deal. That's when she realized like, oh, OK, you're you're done. I think that that's possible. I'm not saying that that's exactly what I think, but I do wonder if there was some manipulation in there with the gun to her head 
as like things were kind of falling apart between them. Or it was like the prosecution says, and Selena wanted those documents, realized that there wasn't um, proof that she didn't steal. And actually, it seemed like she was keeping the evidence away from her that would exonerate that accusation. And Yolanda realized, like, you're not going to live in this world without me, and then shot her. So I think that somewhere in there is the truth. Um, but I do not think that it was an accident. Like she claims like, oh, and then I, I told her don't sh open that door. And then the gun went off. Like, no, when you, it's almost like true crime 101. When you're, when you're in your first year studying true crime and somebody says that they accidentally shot someone and you're like, oh, okay, well, where did the victim get shot? In the back of, of their back, in the back of their back, in their back. That's when you realize like, wait a minute, what? No, that, that can't be an accident. Um, and not only that, it was like nine hours of Yolanda in her truck with the gun to her own head. And not once did she accidentally pull the trigger again, you know, and in the docu-series, there's a, a police officer who handled the gun and he kind of wanted to feel the trigger to see if it was one of those ones that were like very, very sensitive, or was it really one that you had to put pressure on? And he claims that he had to put you know, pressure on it. It wasn't like a, an easy trigger. So I think it was intentional no matter how it happened. Right. Yolanda is a weirdo and dangerous type. Yeah. And then they also talked about how, so somebody that she did like the fashion stuff with sent an assistant over to Yolanda's house to grab something. And the assistant told everybody that, you know, and this is all after the fact, like no one saw this happening or coming. Like even the family was like, we were blindsided. Um, her husband was in bed when, when Selena left. So he, she leaves at nine in the morning to head over to see Yolanda and Chris is, you know, still asleep. So there was nothing that kind of um, alerted any of them or like tipped them off that it would end this way. They were completely blindsided and tricked by Yolanda. Um, so the assistant who ends up going over to Yolanda's house says that it was it was very unsettling because she had every single picture of Selena. She had every single poster and it was just beyond like a fan. Like it was like I said, like she was in love with her, in my opinion. It was much deeper than just an, an obsessed fan. Oh, Shay, thank you for um, stopping in. I hope you feel better. Thank you so much for being here. Okay, so let's play the 911 call and then we'll get back into my notes. I'll read them from my screen. And thank you guys so much for being here. Please hit that like button. What's your location? Uh, Daisy Motel. It's 901 Navigation Boulevard. What's on in? We have a woman ran in the lobby, said she's been shot. She's laying on the floor and there's blood. Hey, Can give me some information. We can catch her. Wait, she can't tell me nothing. The lady that shot. 
have any information about suspect, you call me right back, okay? Yes. Sir. All right, bye-bye. Quintanilla, now living with the silence of his daughter's empty recording studio, says his documents prove that Saldivar embezzled more than $100,000 from Selena. And I did start noticing uh, an obsession with Selena. In my opinion, she was living a life through Selena. Here you have a person that's uh, nowhere in life, right before uh, uh, she killed Selena, I found out that she was talking, stalking Selena by phone. There were allegations that you were in love with her. And that's not true either. And if people think that Selena and I had a lesbian relationship, you're not a fan of Selena. Why did you decide you needed a gun? It was after threats had been made against my life. Who threatened you? Her father. Abraham Quintanilla threatened you? Yes. Quintanilla insists he never threatened Sal Devar. He's convinced that she bought the gun to kill Selena. She saw me as the person who initiated this. And she saw me as the enemy. What, how much more could, he, could she hurt us than killing Selena? So this is the briefcase that um, had the documents in it that Selena went there for. Um, and the thing, too, is they didn't even touch on the fact that the morning that she was shot, Yolanda says, you know, I was essayed and I need to go to the hospital. I need an R kit. And they go to the hospital together. And I believe that this was another last attempt to kind of hold on to whatever um, Yolanda could of her connection with Selena and, and kind of prey on Selena's, you know, goodness. And I'll be there for you. Like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that happened to you. You were attacked by men in Mexico. Like, yes, I will go to the hospital and I will be there while you get this exam. The exam comes back inconclusive, not really looking like she was essayed. And I think that's when Selena's like, this woman is willing to go through like great lengths to kind of keep me around. Like this is, this is not right. Um, but then she goes back to the hotel room with her anyways, and they're alone together. And that's when the um, arguments are heard in the, in the gunshot is heard. So going back to the documentary, it kind of opens up with, um, Abraham's father was the one who thought it would be a good idea to have Yolanda manage the fan club and the boutique. So it talks about how she has appealed three times, claiming her detention was unlawful and said the prosecution withheld exculpatory evidence that would have been favorable for her defense. Um, there's also talk about how when she's in that standoff and that hostage situation with the gun to her temple, that um, the, the officer on the other end says, do you want to retain a lawyer when you get off this phone, when, you, when we get you in custody? And she says, yes. And then she's claiming that she was never given her lawyer and she ends up writing her confession and signing it without her lawyer present. Um, and to which the prosecution has says, like, we can't really hold the officer for what he says during this negotiate negotiate negotiation process, because his objective is to kind of feed her whatever he can so that they get out of the situation with without another casualty. Um, they also claim that she was read her rights when she was taken into custody before this confession was written. And so therefore she was given the chance to seek counsel and decided to sign her confession without counsel. Um, it also talks about how she claims during the time of the confession, she kept saying that it was an accident and they kept telling her, no, that's not what we want you to write. So she's claiming that her confession was kind of forced, that it really was, excuse me, it really was an accident and that she wasn't allowed to put that down in her written statement. Now, the thing is, her interview with police was never recorded. Um, they have notes for it, unfortunately. So we don't really know where the truth lies there. And either way, like you still wrote this confession and you still signed it. And before in the 
in the process of the hostage situation, when he's trying to talk her down from unaliving herself, um, it's, you know, the whole time she kept saying, I did it, I did it, I shot her, everyone's going to hate me, you know, stuff like that, like very much admitting to it. And then it says, it says for the majority of the nine hour standoff, Yolanda admitted to shooting Selena and knowing what she did. It wasn't until the negotiator, Larry, says the gun could have gone off accidentally. Does Yolanda suddenly change her story to it was an accident? And you can kind of hear that in real time when they show that in the documentary. Like, she, like I said, she's very much admitting to it and saying that she did it and she hates herself for it and she wants to die. And then, you know, he's trying to get her to put the gun down and he says, please just put it down on the floor, accidents can happen and we don't want that to happen. I mean, you can accidentally shoot someone, these things happen. And then all of a sudden Yolanda realizes like that's her defense. So she starts saying like, it was an accident and all this stuff. So she's still kind of on that whole, it was an accident thing. Um, but again, it was only really changed in her story as soon as the negotiator for the hostage um, recovery team kind of not really plants it because he was just trying to get her to put the gun down, but she kind of like clung on to that hook, line and sinker and is still claiming that today. So her motions for her appeals along the way have been denied. Yolanda's family starts to show off by saying there's a lot of pieces of the story missing, claiming that the public has only been told um, somewhat of what really happened and not exactly the reality the show starts off with the locals and journalists and hostage police officers describing that day when she was shot. Um, she was president of the fan club and she was hired as an employee by Selena for her boutique. So Selena was very much into the music, but also wanted to get into fashion, needed help with that. So that's when she realized like, oh, well, this Yolanda girl seems very much, you know, ride or die for me. So I should bring her into this part of my business I need a lot of help with. So an author that is kind of um, very much in all the Selena documentaries, even before this one, and has written multiple books on her, he's in the show and he says that Abraham was her manager and her father, but he was surprised how quickly after she was shot, the manager side kicked into gear and he was holding a press conference while Yolanda was still in the truck with a gun to her head. They claim police wasn't willing to disclose with the public everything Abraham was saying. Um, and Abraham was telling everyone it was over missing money. So I thought it was interesting to kind of time, you know, because we've seen um, him on that microphone, Abraham, talking about what had happened and how upset he was, obviously. I didn't actually realize that, like, she's still in the truck and they're still trying to talk her down and get her into custody while he's holding the press conference. So I think that the timeline was interesting to kind of put together there. Um, the officer who speaks to Yolanda during the hostage situation in her truck speaks and discusses his thoughts on re-listening to the call between them when she's crying and wishing that she could die. And he describes it as unpleasant to listen to um, because he said that when you're in these negotiations, the person is in their worst moment of their life and then that's when you have to start a conversation with them. So the SWAT team takes her down and it shows it on the show. Like you could see her kind of being <laughs> trampled by these guys. It was kind of funny to see. Um, and then they're taking her into the police station. She trips on the curb. Um, officers who transported her said that Yolanda was saying, I shot her, I shot her, I shot her the whole ride to the police station. Her story has remained the same for a long time. I shot her. I didn't mean to. It was an accident. Um, the author claims there's a lot of gray areas and twists and turns in this case. And if it was an accident, then that's not murder. Um, for her wake, 50,000 fans came to pay respects. And it shows parts of her wake, uh, including the open casket. Soon after the fame started rising, so kind of rewinding back to before she was shot, um, it's talking about how, you know, she out of nowhere just started booming, like was huge. And that's when all these phone calls started going into their house phone and solicitors just trying to um, appeal to the family, like, oh, we'd love for you to be here and there and all this stuff. Uh, it talks about how one day the house phone rang 10 to 15 calls in a row from someone named Yolanda. 
and she was a huge fan and wanted to know if she could start the fan club and get the permission from Abraham. And he says, yeah, that's great. You know, we'd love that. He sees Yolanda doing a great job with the fan club. Um, she seems like somebody they can trust. The family hung out with her family. Um, Yolanda starts hiring her nieces and stuff to help with the boutique, the nieces that are in the docuseries. The nieces talk on camera and they say, like, I am i don't tell people that I'm Yolanda's niece. Or, yeah, niece. Um, and then they talk about how, in fact, it's not going to be until this airs that a lot of people close to us are going to realize who we're related to. So I thought that was interesting because it's like, if you think that your aunt's so innocent, then why are you hiding like this whole dark secret? But at the same time, how many people really believe that Yolanda's innocent, you know? Um, looking through my notes, then she starts working closer. Okay. So she's, she starts working closer with the family, not even Selena at this point. And she's doing charity work in the, on behalf of the band. So Selena and her band, um, Yolanda starts doing charity work with, um, Selena's sister. And then that's when she kind of gets closer and closer. Yolanda starts talking about how amazing Selena's aura was. It was very creepy. She sounds like she was in love with her and reminiscing and mentions how kind and down to earth Selena was right off the bat. Um, in fact, Yolanda says something that it's just like, this is red flag. She says, um, when I met her, I was just so surprised and taken back about how nice she was to me. And I just kept thinking, this girl doesn't even know me and she's being so nice. And then like hearing her say it, I started realizing like that was like perfect for a predator to realize like, oh, wow, like she's being so nice to me and she doesn't even know me. Like I'm in, you know, I can get it closer and closer to this girl and, you know, a dangerous person doing that and preying on somebody so kind and generous like Selena, look how it ended, you know? But when Yolanda is saying it, like in the docuseries, she's not realizing that she comes across as very predatorial when she says that. So if you watch it and you hear her say that, to me, that like set off red flags because I'm like, she knew like so soon, like that she would be able to just weasel her way in. Um, and I'm not sure how she thought it would end, but she very much, I think, was in love with her right off the bat. Um, it's pointed out by a modern journalist who is kind of going over Selena's case, how unfair the media was back then and how the media only showed one side and it's not always the truth. Um, Yolanda talks about how she was convicted by public opinion long before her trial started. It shows clips of people hating on Yolanda. Um, Yolanda claims they've all been fed a narrative that isn't correct and she wasn't portrayed by the media accurately and she was convicted by public opinion and walked into court guilty and had to prove her innocence instead of the other way around. She claims Abraham poisoned the public's minds and claims her family supports her and her mother said a lie will stand until the truth arrives. Her niece claims she believes it was an accident, shows them going through a bunch of boxes and storage units that has all of Yolanda's stuff. Um, first time she's come out to the public, the boxes show the relationship between Selena and Yolanda and claims it will show the world that there's more to the story than what's been told. Um, she's reminiscing and Yolanda claims they called them needy to her needing. Okay. So there was a point in Selena's career where, um, her father very much was involved. You know, we all know that. But there was a point where she, Selena was being pulled in so many different directions that the mom and dad couldn't always be there with Selena as she was doing um, business obligations. So Yolanda claims that it wasn't her who, who was seeking to be close to Selena. It was actually the opposite that Abraham gets a hold of her and says, we're unable to attend this thing with Selena. Can you please fly out with her? And kind of be there to kind of manage the situation. So again, who knows where the truth really lies. But I think that it's possible it could be both. That Abraham saw her as a loyal um, employee and somebody who handled the fan 
club really well and thought she would be perfect to kind of be our lieutenant. You know, when, when she needs us, dad and mom will be there, her husband, of course. But there's times when we can't be there. So I trust Yolanda, please come in and take our place. So again, they they were blindsided by her doing what she did. So they thought that this was a good idea. So she wanted someone who they could depend on and who was going to do the work. So they became friends and was a friend and confident and held onto secrets and depend and was dependable. And they were secrets that she didn't want her friends and family to know. So this is where Yolanda starts insinuating like, there was another side of Selena that nobody knew. And I had to carry these secrets. And it got to the point where, you know, secrets can be too much for a friendship. Yolanda says Selena didn't have close friendships with people. So she became her friend and she would tell her things and knew Yolanda would keep it private. The niece claims once you start keeping secrets, it can make it difficult because you don't want to betray, betray your friend in telling the family and husband things, but you also want to tell people because you want to help your friend from spiral, spiraling out of control. And she claims that Selena made mistakes and claims an affair took place. And um, Yolanda was put in this awkward situation where she had to cover it up. And um, when she's talking about the affair part, I noted that her body language was interesting. Um, she is a good liar, I think. Um, now, whether or not this affair took place, I really don't know. But I'm wondering if Yolanda, when she says, you know, and here is Chris has no idea what his wife is doing, like stuff like that. It makes me wonder if Yolanda was like, if this affair did take place, it makes me wonder if Yolanda was jealous. Like it wasn't just. I was carrying these secrets and it was too much. It's because I love her and she was doing things that I didn't approve of. And it's more than just a friend saying like, you shouldn't be doing this. It was somebody who was obsessed and in love with her and was like, no, like you should not be doing this with this guy. Like when really it was because she wanted her all to herself. Um, so Selena, et cetera, was a, her own project. And she asked Yolanda to help them start off with the fashion boutiques. Hi, Alex, and everyone joining from Alex's stream. It's good to see you guys. Thanks for being here. So Abraham, Yolanda claims Abraham gave her an ultimatum. She said she could do both. Um, Abraham said it's either you do singing or you're doing fashion. And Yolanda's trying to spin this whole thing that, like, Abraham was so controlling. And um, Selena wanted to do this fashion stuff without Abraham's input. And um, Abraham didn't manage her boutique in fashion. He only managed her singing career. She was on the road to success with her perfume and fashion design. And Abraham knew it and was mad Selena didn't include him on that success. Apparently, there's a lot of people who covered the case back then who are still wondering why Yolanda did it. So there's like people who you know how documentaries are. There's people who were like, yes, I covered this from day one and I'm a local journalist from the area, blah, blah, blah. And we just don't understand, like, why did she do it? So as much as people say, like, well, it's because she was confronted with the embezzlement. Um, it seems like there are people who were very close to following this, even during the trial, who are still not totally convinced on this whole narrative or just don't understand it pretty much. Um, and sometimes you just never really get the answer to the why. And the only people who know the answer to the why is Selena and Yolanda. And Yolanda is taking the truth to her grave, it seems, because she is steadfast in this whole narrative that it was an accident. All right. Um... Prosecution, some of the prosecution is on the docu, um, docu series as well, is really interesting. Prosecution goes back a few months. So when they're doing their investigation and for their case for the trial, they actually only went back a few months. A lot of cases, people go back years. They only went back a few months. Yolanda's fan club had complaints. So part of this fan club was there was a small fee that you pay. And then you get like a package in the mail that had, you know, fan stuff, maybe a T-shirt. Not really sure the the um, itemized stuff that was sent out, 
But at one point, Abraham keeps getting, you know, complaints from people in the fan club who were saying like, hey, I, I paid, but I didn't have actually receive my package. So that's how things kind of get tipped off with like, OK, so what's going on? Like, who is managing the stuff? Why are they not receiving things? What's going on? So he starts going through the paperwork and he finds checks that Yolanda had wrote to herself. So Abraham calls a meeting with Yolanda. Abraham says, um, and then they play like a voicemail from Abraham to Yolanda on that day of the meeting. And he's like, you're late. I told you to be here at nine. It's 920. Where are you? So I thought that was interesting. Again, it's it's nothing really super new, but little things along the way that the Yolanda's family had access to because of her um items and stuff from her house at the time had to be put into storage. So of course they took her answering machine and they get like the copy from uh, of the tape, you know? So I thought that was interesting to kind of hear um, Abraham yelling at her for being late for their meeting. Anyway, so they do meet up and that's when the, Abraham says like, you're stealing money or what's this about? And he claims that Yolanda had no explanation or just was saying, I don't know. Now in the series, of course, Yolanda is saying she wasn't given the chance to explain and that it, um, Abraham was irate and just screaming at her. And she kept looking over at Selena, like, save me, save me. And that never happened. And she claims that, you know, she was looking for Selena to step in and say, those checks were written because I'm having an affair. So Yolanda says that, she was writing checks to herself so that it wasn't going to be found out from anyone that they were flying to Mexico to see Dr. Martinez. So according to Yolanda, that's why she was looking towards Selena to kind of save her in that whole confrontation. And it never came because Selena didn't want anybody to know the real story and that it was about the affair. And, uh, but again, we have... Abraham claiming it was a hundred thousand dollars. And then we have Yolanda saying that like, they never, they kept changing the, the amount. First it was 60, then it was 90. And they actually asked the prosecutor in the docuseries, like how much was actually being embezzled. And he couldn't even really come up with the accurate number. Like, and then he says something that I thought was kind of, you know, made sense. He's like, our trial wasn't about, did she steal money? Our trial was, you know, did Selena think that she was stealing money? Therefore, they had this confrontation and she gets shot. All right, what else? Yolanda claims she wasn't able to talk because Abraham, Abraham kept yelling at her and there's money missing. Get, he kept saying there's money missing. Get out of here. Don't ever come back. Yolanda claims no one has ever showed evidence to this day that she was stealing and they didn't show it in the trial and they still haven't. Yolanda's family claims there was no money to steal and that the boutiques and stuff really weren't even making money. Um, I don't see how they would know that without like an accountant to kind of itemize everything to them too. But that's the narrative that Yolanda has fed her family. Um, and then the docuseries just kind of does point out that like no one can give a clear amount. 30, 90, 60, 90, like they asked journalists, they asked authors on the show. Um, she was never charged with um, embezzlement. No one explained how she took it or where the assets of it was. Um, Yolanda claims the embezzlement didn't exist and that the district attorney told her they wouldn't be able to press charges and the investigation stopped. So who knows if that's true. Regardless, this isn't a trial on embezzlement. This is a trial that is showing they thought you were stealing. Therefore, you shot them because of this confrontation. So claiming that she bought the gun for self-defense because she was fearful after being screamed at and accused by Abraham. Prosecution claims her whole world ends. And if this relationship ends, which I do believe, like, I think that that's accurate. Um, they arrange to meet, meet um, to pick up important documents. And that's when the shooting takes place. Uh, and I told you guys before how, you know, she's come, she's confronted. 
she buys a gun. It's proven that her and Selena kind of smooth things out or are still in connection. She returns the gun. And then Selena asks for important documents, business documents that probably would show like, yeah, actually you are stealing. And this kind of verifies it. And then that's when she goes back to the gun store and rebuys the gun. So, um, so some of the words that the eyewitnesses say that they heard when they heard the gun was, help me, help me. I've been shot. Lock the door. She's after me. And then that's when they said, you know, who shot you? And she says, Yolanda Salvador, room 158. And those were the last words that she spoke. Um, officers who interviewed her that day speak and they claim that Yolanda told him and he pretty much says it in Spanish, but that he translates it and says that she said to him in her confession that she did it out of anger. Now, also, I had said that the interview between her and police aren't isn't recorded, unfortunately, and it's all in notes, written down notes. Yolanda, I told you guys that she claims her confession was forced and that it was an accident and they wouldn't let her put that down. Um, then it starts talking about the room. So 158 was where it happened, happened in the doorway. A lot of the blood was on the door and outside the door. Not very much was in the hotel room itself. So. As she was leaving, she gets it in the back and starts running towards the um, lobby through the court, the courtyard. And an eyewitness comes out on the stand and says that it, I believe it was a maid says that Yolanda still had the gun pointing towards where Selena was running. And she heard her say, bitch. And now the defense claims in this docuseries like. We these eyewitnesses never put that down on their report when this first took place. So they kind of get questioned on the stand. Again, there was no cameras in the courtroom for this trial, but they're kind of questioned like, why didn't you put that down on your um, report when the officers asked you what you heard and saw? So regardless if that really took place, I don't think that it really takes away from what happened. Like, I think that even if we didn't know that she pointed the gun and said, bitch, I think that we all could say like, wow, what a heartless woman. She did it. Um, people saw uh, and Yolanda is kind of named by the victim in her last breath. Yolanda. Now, people, when we're talking about was it an accident, all this stuff, I realized like, I, which I kind of was surprised that they kind of glossed over it um, in all the documentaries I've seen. You know, for me, there's so much that points to it not being an accident. But one of the main things to me is the fact that Selena is running and says, lock the door. She's after me or something along the lines of she'll shoot me again. Um, I've seen it kind of worded more than one. Um, one. Um, there's more than one article that I've read. It's either some of them quote her as saying, lock the door. She's after me. And then another one said, lock the door. She'll shoot me again. Either way, something along those lines was said by Selena. And if you're shot by somebody that you know on accident, are you going to go to help and tell them to lock their door because she's going to do it again or she's on her way there? Like, no, if it's an accident, you know, you're saying call 911. Like, would you even run? You know, you would probably just be there stunned with your friend. Like, oh, my God, like call 911. Help me. Um, instead, she bolted to get away from Yolanda and says to the people, you know, who are there to help her, help me, help me. I've been shot. Lock the door. She's after me. It's like you wouldn't think to say to somebody, lock the door if it was a, a situation where you felt like it was an accident. You know, you wouldn't want them to like it. It wouldn't be a priority. You know, you're bleeding through a. a an artery that's what had happened is she got shot like in the back like shoulder blade area and it went through and hit like a, a main artery near her heart she's bleeding so fast and running you know the last thing she's gonna you know do is waste her breath so she's frantic and in fear of her life um you're not really going to be frantic and in fear of your life if something took place and it was like a wholehearted accident in my opinion 
said, so sad she died there. Yeah, she drifted off um, into unconsciousness after naming Yolanda in the room. And then she's declared dead at the hospital. So it really is a sad, devastating case. It's very, it's just tragic. And I don't know, I, when I think about the origins of when I started getting into true crime, I knew that this took place and I loved the CD. I have the CD, I still have it. Um, again, I didn't really stumble on her music until years after she was killed because the American album came out after she died. So that's what I kind of listened to. And then of course the JLo movie, that's how I kind of got to know her story even more. So after she's shot, days go by, crime scene wasn't secured anymore because, you know, they've released it. And a hotel maid goes into the room and find Yolanda's purse in the safe with a letter from Yolanda's lawyer of resignation. And that was on March 13th. And it, um, they start pointing out how it took three days for them to find the purse, um, shows the media and narrative is wrong when it said that she was being fired. She had quit, but that doesn't change the complication, the complicated relationship at the time of her death for Selena. So what I mean by that in my notes is they stumble on her purse. They find this resignation letter. Again, this resignation letter is backed up in Selena's husband's police interview. He mentions the letter and says, yes, she received it. But we know from other sources, including her father, that they fell out. She bought the gun. They smooth things over because Selena really desperately needs her help. Like she helps her with her business. She can't just drop one of her main employees at that time. So they smooth things over. Yolanda returns the gun and then obviously takes back her resignation because I think at that moment she's thinking, oh, Selena needs me. Like I don't have to be, um, I don't have to walk away from this. Um, she needs me. And then I think Yolanda started realizing like her back was up against the wall when Selena saying like, Hey, do you have those business documents? I just want to take a look or we got to kind of iron this stuff out. And then that's when Yolanda realizes like, we're going to fall out again. And I can't let that happen. Buys the gun again. So in a desperate move, that's when she rebuys the gun. Um, there was a voicemail on her answering machine about, uh, a nursing, what's it called? What's it called when you go to do a new uh, a new job and they, they do that, like orientation, I'm sorry. Yeah, so there was a voicemail on, that her family shows was on her message machine and it's, it's talking about orientation. So they're saying like, oh, see, she was ready to go back to be a nurse. And like, just because she had lined up another job to me, doesn't mean like she was like happy about going back to nursing. Um, she's got to obviously pay the bills. So I still think that like, even if she had plans to go back to nursing, she was just desperate enough to kind of salvage what she could with Selena. And then that didn't happen. So then this letter from Lorenzo pops up and this is brought to, or this is sent to Yolanda after she's incarcerated and it's from Lorenzo, and it pretty much gives off this narrative of um, Abraham, because of my guilt, I'm reaching out to you to let you know that Abraham really did hire me to attack you. And so pretty much this whole letter is kind of um, backing up her claims that like, yes, I was in fear of my life because Abraham said that he was going to have people go after me. And she claims that, you know, she was being followed. She claims her tires were slashed and, you know, she, um, all these things that there's no proof of, you know, there's no tire receipt showing that you got something replaced. Um, it's just, we don't even know when that letter was written or who it was by. When you see the handwriting in the docu-series, it looks very much like a female write, wrote it. That's just my opinion. Obviously, I'm not an expert. You guys could um, check for yourself what you think, but the whole letter thing was just BS in my opinion. Of course, she never presents the diary that she claims backs up her claims about this affair. And of course, there's no tape that she presents that proves the affair. 
Um, I talked about how she had bodyguard type behavior with fans and her. Um, okay, all these other notes we pretty much have talked about. So that is the recap of the show. What I want to do now is kind of just do a recap of the case. So again, I do think that the show is worth watching. I don't think that it's worth being almost three hours long. Um, I think that they could have summed it up in part one. They never, so the show, you know how documentaries end and it's like a black screen and it's like white letters and it tells you like what happened. So it ends with those and it says, Dr. Ricardo Martinez could not be reached for comment. Abraham declined producer's request for comment. He has previously denied many of um, Yolanda's allegations and was recently reported as saying, I don't believe anything she says. She's a liar. Producers were unable to substantiate claims that Selena directed Yolanda to write or sign checks to herself from Selena, et cetera. So pretty much saying like this whole theory that Yolanda was writing checks to herself to hide their trips and anything connecting Selena to this doctor, um, they found no evidence of any of that kind of being backed up. Producers were unable to, okay, I already got that. Yolanda has never been charged with or convicted of embezzlement or theft from Selena, the fan club, or Selena's businesses. Yolanda will become eligible for parole on March 31st, 2025, after serving 30 years of her life sentence. And that's how the show ends. So again, I do recommend it. I just, as much as this story is so sad, I love seeing, you know, the clips of Selena and just her on stage. She's just a very captivating person. Um, and her legacy definitely lives on even in death. So again, watch the show if you want. So yeah, and said, here's to 30 more years, right? Okay. Let me just check with you guys in chat. I'm sorry. I haven't really been going through chat. I've just been kind of reading my notes and I want to kind of do this summary in a way that was kind of, um, not quick, but worth your guys's click. Now, I just appreciate you guys all being here. Oh, yeah. awesome, Amber. Thanks, because I loved the movie, but never looked into the case like that. Oh, well, then you'll like this. Okay, so let me just remove this. Share my screen. Okay, let's go to this article. And this is um, from 1995. So... What the heck? Um, one second. Selena named suspect as killer. Witness testified courts. Motel clerk says singer screamed, lock the door. She'll shoot me again. And named Yolanda in the chaos after the gunfire. Tejano singer Selena, mortally wounded and terrified, identified her killer as she lay dying on the floor of the motel lobby, a witness said Friday in the trial of the woman accused of murdering her. So the trial was actually seven months after the crime took place. That was something else that is revealed in the show. And they actually talk about how they moved venues. So it wasn't in Corpus Christi. They moved it um, to a different city for the um, jury selection and all that. So Shauna Vela, a desk clerk at the Days Inn in Corpus Christi, Texas, told the jury the last words of Selena were Yolanda, 158, after she was shot by Yolanda Salvador on March 31st in what prosecutors said was a business dispute. Selena had gone to room 158 to collect business records from Yolanda. Yolanda's founder of Selena's fan club and manager of her clothing boutique faces life in prison if convicted of intentionally murdering the singer, which, of course, we know she was. If the jury decides the shooting was an accident, her lawyers argue she could be sentenced to a maximum of 20 years. Vela said chaos erupted as Selena burst through a set of doors into the lobby, her clothes soaked in blood from a gunshot wound to her back. Help me, help me, I've been shot. 
She recalled a terrified Selena screaming, lock the door, she'll shoot me again. The singer then slumped to the floor, her hands over the wound where the bullet fired. A 38 caliber, caliber pistol had exited from the right side of her chest, severing an artery. Paramedics testified that they arrived at the motel within two minutes of the shooting to find Selena unconscious from blood loss and not breathing. Blood was thick from her neck to her knees, said the paramedic Richard Fredrickson, referring to the sweatsuit she wore, which soaked up most of the blood. The ambulance crew could not revive her as they transported Selena to the regional trauma center. There was no pulse. Defense attorney Douglas Tinker had acknowledged that Yolanda shot Selena, but he said the shooting was accidental. In opening arguments, he said a hysterical Yolanda was holding a gun to her head and threatening to K herself when she accidentally fired the fatal bullet into Selena. He said the tragedy was triggered by Selena's father, Abraham, who he said drove Yolanda to near madness with threats aimed at breaking up her friendship with his daughter. But prosecutors say Yolanda shot Selena in anger after the singer fired her for allegedly embezzling money from her business. Witnesses on Thursday said they saw a gun welding Yolanda chasing Selena through the motel courtyard and cursing. And then, so that was from 1995 um, as the trial was taking place before the jury came up with their conviction. And then this one, we'll get to Dr. Martinez stuff in a minute. And again, not that the affair really matters in the grand scheme of things, in my opinion. You know, it's like, Yolanda, you sh you shot her, though. You know, you you pulled the trigger. Um, uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. In March of 1995, Selena had a falling out with her friend and fan club manager, Yolanda, who had also been entrusted with managing Selena's fashion and jewelry stores, Selena, etc., and had been embezzling money from both the fan club and the stores. The two agreed to meet at the Days Inn in Corpus Christi, Texas, because Selena needed tax documents from Salvador regarding the business. Motel, motel staff confirmed that the two women were arguing loudly, and some witnesses stated Selena told Yolanda she was no longer trustworthy. This may have been what pushed Yolanda over the edge as she responded by shooting the singer. Selena ran from the room calling for help. The blood trail from the scene of the shooting to where Selena collapsed was 392 feet long. Witnesses told police Selena was screaming as she ran from her killer. Help me, help me, I've been shot. A later medical examination would reveal that the bullet severed an artery in Selena's lower right shoulder. This led to Selena bleeding out and going into cardiac arrest within two hours. An ambulance came within two minutes. An ambulance arrived on the scene in two minutes. Richard Fredrickson, a paramedic, rushed to the scene and to Selena's aid and testified the girl was covered with blood. Blood was thick from her neck to her knees all the way around both sides. He realized it was already too late to save the girl's life because she had lost too much blood. Medical staff were able to get an erratic heartbeat at the hospital, but it wasn't enough. At noon, Corpus Christi Memorial Hospital emergency room staff helped Selena recover an erratic heartbeat, and they started giving, giving her blood transfusions. Her father protested this step of the medical process due to Selena's religious beliefs. Doctors spent more than an hour trying to repair the damage that the bullet caused, but they were unsuccessful and pronounced her dead at 1.05 p.m. Mind you, she goes over to... Yolanda's place at nine. She leaves her husband laying in bed at 9 a.m. to go see Yolanda. Um, an autopsy was conducted a mere three hours after Selena was shot. Pressure on medical examiners was immense in the immediate aftermath of Selena's death due to her popularity and public outcry. An autopsy began three hours um, after the shooting. The bullet severed her right sublevian artery which caused unrepairable damage. In a cruel twist of fate, doctors announced that only one millimeter in any other direction would have produced much less damage and blood loss. 
her murderer embezzled $60,000 from her fan club and her Selena, et cetera, store. So this article is saying 60. The docuseries talks about how 30 to 60 to 30 to 90 have been mentioned. Um, that one clip that I played in the beginning and the clips that I put together mentions 100,000. So, I mean, I'm not siding with anything Yolanda says, but I do find it interesting that like even in my research, I'm trying to find out, you know, the exact number that was stolen. Not that it matters. I mean, you can you can steal a few dollars from a friend and, and the trust is broken. Yolanda was a registered nurse who grew to love Selena's music, music so much, she asked for permission to start a fan club. Now, this whole called them over and over, I mean, that was sort of a tipping. To Looking back, I'm sure they're like, okay, this person called us like 10 to 15 times a day to get our permission for the fan club. Like that should have been a red flag and in a way but they were just so big at the time and popping off so fast that her call just kind of mixed in with all the other solicitors. This led to Salvador developing a friendship and business relationship with Selena. From 1991 to January 95, Selena's family believed Yolanda to be a trusted member of their inner circle. Sometime in 94, Selena also entrusted Yolanda with managing two boutiques. Everything began to fall apart when it became clear that somebody embezzled $60,000 via the fan club and Selena, etc. Salvador's handwriting on forged checks immediately re revealed her culpability. When Salvador's lies were discovered by Selena's family, she skipped town with important business records. When it became clear that Yolanda had stolen money, Selena's family terminated her employment on March 9, 1995. Yolanda refused to turn over important tax documents for the fan club and Selena, et cetera, which Selena needed and immediately fled. Though dates vary on when Yolanda purchased a gun, court testimonies reveal that Yolanda bought a gun on March 11th, along with bullets known for inflicting a larger amount of damage than usual. Yolanda could contact Selena again within the month and set up a meeting at the day's inn. She told Selena to come by herself and agreed to hand over the necessary documents. And then that's when she claims like, help me, I've been essayed, please go with me to the hospital and I'm gonna get this um, R kit done and, and, and I just need you to be there for me, which again was a, a, another lie. And that's the thing, somebody just like Amber Heard, you know, lying about an essay, you really are the worst of the worst to do so. You know, so the fact that she lied about the essay, like this woman, I don't really know if I can believe this whole affair thing took place, even though the doctor is claiming it, it did take place. <sighs> Yolanda had an obsessive relationship with the singer. Selena showed Yolanda gratitude for the continual growth of her fan club by giving Yolanda expensive gifts. Over time, the two also became close friends. However, some question the obsessive nature of Yolanda's side of the friendship, as she even quit her nursing job to be on Selena's side. It was even alleged that Yolanda created a shrine to the singer that included a life-size cardboard cutout of the Selena of Selena. Designer Martin Gomez worked briefly on the fashion label Selena, etc., and described Salvador as mean, possessive, and manipulative. So he's also the one that said um, it was like you had to go through Yolanda to get to Selena. And he's also the one that said he sent a um, assistant over to Yolanda's house to pick up something. And that's when the assistant told him like, yeah, I went over there and she has all these pictures and posters of Selena. Now at the time it might've been seen like, oh, that's weird. But now looking back, and we all know, it's just, can you imagine Yolanda's house, you know, walking in and just seeing her obsessiveness with Selena, obviously an unhealthy level. Yolanda attempted to leave the motel property, but a police officer stopped her. This led to an intense nine-hour standoff between police and the killer. Throughout the standoff, Yolanda changed her story numerous times. First, she claimed the gun simply went off on its own. Later, she stated she was actually trying to K herself, and Selena intervened. Right before finally giving up and turning herself in, Yolanda pointed the gun at her own head. And now, the thing, too, which she's been asked in, in, art, or, um, in interviews since, like, why didn't 
you know, once you did what you did to Selena and you were in that car for nine hours, you know, if it all started with that gun to your own head anyways, why didn't you just do it? You know, once the accident had taken place, you know, and it's because I just don't think that ever even really happened likely, you know. All right. Selena was already a big part of the Latino and Mexican American communities and music scene. Her ultimate untimely death further cemented her status as an icon with a hugely devoted following. So that just goes on about her um, popularity. Not much on the case. I did find this article interesting, too. I want to share with you guys. She probably has security for certain events, but not with friends and family and stuff. Yeah. And they kind of talked about that, too. Like the husband in an interview says, um, we never really were in fear for Selena's life, even on the road, because we always had security and we always had bodyguards. So when this happened and we found out that it was Yolanda, they were just completely like blindsided. I think blindsided was an understatement. And he says, you know, the, the husband says, I would never, and this isn't in the documentary. It's just an, another interview because the family didn't partake in that documentary. But, you know, Chris has said, I, I would never have let her go over to that hotel by herself had I had any inclination that there was like a grudge, like there obviously was. So this is uh, the victim and the murderer. The singer known as Queen of Tex-Mex was one of Latin, Latin's greatest uh, music stars. In the early 1995, Selena was recording some songs in English to dive into the English music market. Yolanda, 34, was the boutique's um, president and, and the president of her fan club. The singer fired her a few days earlier because of suspicions about her handling of the accounts. However, she kept However, she changed her mind and kept Yolanda on the payroll until finishing some arrangements with her clothing line in Monterey. So the night before, March 30th, 1995, Selena visited Yolanda in the night at the Days Inn Motel to look over some bank statements from the singer's boutique. Yolanda told her that she was essayed and beaten during a recent trip to Mexico. Selena offered to go along with her to the doctor the next day. Nine in the morning, Selena took Yolanda to the hospital where they seemed to be no sign of the alleged essay. They gave her back her clothes in a paper bag and the two women returned to the motel in Selena's blue Chevy pickup. Selena parked her pickup in the motel's lot and they went into the room. Selena and Yolanda began arguing loudly inside the room. Here's a little picture of the room. Now you can see that there there really wasn't much blood spatter. So that's the door doorway. You can kind of maybe see it on the floor. I only know because I've seen pictures of the crime scene. Um, this is where like the blood was. And then the door that's open here had blood on it as well. So she was almost out of, you know, the room. Reconstruction of the murder site using official police sketch. So this is the room. The singer asked Yolanda for the documents regarding her business affairs. Yolanda said she grabbed the papers she had and turned them over along with her cell phone. However, in Yolanda's briefcase found in the room, there were more papers and another cell phone. We both argued because I wanted to quit working for her. I gave her everything that I had, the cellular phone, the bank files, as we argued. Selena took the briefcase and headed for the door, which was open. Just then, Yolanda took a revolver out of her bag and shot Selena in the back. The shot went in Selena's back and came out her upper right chest. Yolanda shot Selena with a 38 caliber hollow head bullet. Um, estimated minimum distance between them was around two feet. The singer wounded ran out of the room. As she ran, she dropped the briefcase and cell phone. When she got to the parking lot, she also lost her bag. So yeah, there's pictures. I don't know if it shows in this article. Oh, there's the blood. There's pictures of her purse. You know, as she was sprinting, these things were kind of dropped. And it's so sad. And it's a beautiful black Chanel purse. 
just so stylish and she was just such an icon. Um, so yeah, this is her path that she ran, Selena's attempted escape. And now it's just crazy to think about, you know, she had, you know, when you run, your heart is pumping, right? So as she's running, I'm, it's just crazy to think that like she was losing so much blood and her, her heart was pumping so, you know, rapidly that it could only last so long, um, before she collapsed. The days in reconstruction, Selena's flight, according to the sketch by detective Paul Rivera, um, on the 31st, 1995 of March. Oh yeah. So here's her purse. Everything just dropped in its place. As she ran through the parking lot, this um, singer left behind the pool and restaurant, reaching the door of the motel where the receptionist's office. Selena fainted. Selena entered the hotel's reception's office asking for help before she fainted at the counter. Yolanda, room 158, were her last words. 11.49 a.m., Barbara Schultz, motel manager, immediately called 911, which we listened to the 911 call earlier. We have a woman, ran in the lobby, said she's been shot. She's laying on the floor and there's blood. The ambulance came two minutes later. Selena dies. Selena was immediately rushed to the Corpus Christi's Memorial Hospital. The bullet shattered her right shoulder, tearing one lung, her veins and major artery. At 1.05 p.m., she was declared dead. Selena Cantania, a 23-year-old woman, came to her death as a result of exon... I'm not sure of this word. Exsanguinating internal and external hemorrhage due to a perforating gunshot wound of the chest. Perforating. There we go. <laughs> Sorry, guys. All right. So that just kind of recaps the case itself. Yeah, in other words, she bled to death, sadly. Just tragic and unnecessary waste of life. Wow, Yolanda and the room number are her last words. Yep. And on the um, thumbnail, her saying, like, lock the door, she'll shoot me again, was also, like, said beforehand. It's just so sad. It's such a sad case. Um, now, as far as the affair, you know, I cannot find anything that is 100% conclusive, like, yes, this is proof. Um, like I said, when he was deposed by the prosecution under oath, he claimed, no, it was strictly business. Um, who is Dr. Ricardo Martinez and how was he involved with Selena? In the years following Selena's murder, multiple rumors would emerge about the Queen and the Tejano music's personal life. One such rumor stems from the Mexican-American pop stars, fashion boutique, Selena, etc., two of which were open in 94. At the time of her death, Selena was in the midst of opening a third boutique in Monterey, where fans would be able to shop for merchandise and pamper at an on-site spa. While the third location never came to fru fruition, details about the boutique came to light during the trial of Selena's convicted killer, Yolanda Sal Salvador. Um... Dr. Martinez, the Monterey-based doctor's name, was first mentioned in the days leading up to the trial of Yolanda Salvador. Yolanda's defense attorneys had requested that Martinez be deposed and requested that was granted by the judge, according to the district attorney, Carlos Valdez's book. In the book, Valdez writes that Martinez spoke with Yolanda's defense attorney, Arnold Garcia, who asked about the nature of the medical doctor's relationship with Selena. Through a translator, Martinez claimed that he began treating Selena in 94 before assisting her with licensing and other tasks related to opening her boutique, according to Justice for Selena. Dr. Martinez was never called to testify at the trial. Allegations of an affair. Years later in 2012, okay, so part of the interview that I showed earlier in our stream was from this 2012 interview. Dr. Ricardo Ramirez claimed that a love existed between him and Selena during an interview with a TV program 
Primer Impacto. According to the translation of the interview featured in Selena and Yolanda, The Secrets Between Them, Dr. Martinez reportedly said, even though it was short, we gave ourselves to each other completely. Following the interview, Selena's father, Abraham, posted a lengthy message to the family's Q Productions Facebook page denying the doctor's claims. In the note translated from Spanish to English, Abraham said, it is definitely not a true story since it is based on falsehoods that, although they are scandalous and sell, also hurt and tarnish the names of an innocent person who can no longer defend themselves. Dr. Ricardo could not be reached for comment by producers on the new show. We had stated that earlier. Um, now, this other article in my quest for the truth about this affair stumbled on this one. Um, when asked about his alleged affair with Selena, Dr. Ricardo said he was willing to change his life for her. Has he lied? The life and death of Tejano singer Selena Cantonina has been the subject of films and documentaries since she was murdered on March 31st, 1995. The details of that night have often come into question as the killer Yolanda has always maintained it was an accident. In February 2024, Oxygen allowed Sal Salvador to tell her version of events in the docuseries. Something Yolanda has alleged is that Selena was having an affair with a man named Dr. Ricardo Martinez. Naturally, this is a complicated situation. Here's what we know about the scandal scandalous accusation. Dr. Ricardo Martinez initially denied having an affair with Selena. In the docuseries, Yolanda claimed that Selena described her first meeting with Martinez as love at first sight. She went on to say they grew more affectionate with each other and would often hold hands and kiss. Yolanda said their relationship made her uncomfortable because not only was Selena being unfaithful to her husband, but Yolanda was frequently asked and tasked with lying for them. However, Yolanda's trial, Martinez denied having an affair. In his deposition, Martinez said their relationship was strictly business. He was helping Selena set up another boutique location in Mexico. The singer was also a fashion designer and had opened up stores in San Antonio and Corpus Christi, Texas. Eventually, she was looking to open up a third. While no physical evidence could be found that supported the claims, Yolanda's relatives did come across a questionable item while going through her things. Part of the docuseries features Yolanda's family shedding new light on her story by revisiting personal items. One of them was a red envelope with the words, Doctor's Secrets, written on them. Inside was a tiny card with an encryption that reads, Selena, I love you, your friend forever, Ricardo. Now, this was the note that I said that they did show that I found was interesting. That's what it said on the inside. On the outside, it says, you light up my life. So very interesting. Again, um, has the doctor come out and said like, yes, I wrote that? Like, no, I have yet to see that. Um, so who knows who wrote that? In August 2012, Dr. Ricardo Martinez came clean about his alleged affair with Selena. And in August 2012 interview, Martinez went into great detail about his supposed affair with Selena. According to him, they met when he brought his daughters to one of her concerts in Monterey, Mexico. Afterwards, they went backstage so his children could get autographs. While there, Selena asked if he wanted one, and he proceeded to have her sign a pocket of his jeans. A few days later, Selena apparently reached out to Martinez, a well-respected plastic surgeon, because she wanted to inquire about a cosmetic procedure. Martinez claimed he, he performed liposuction on the Tejano singer and added they were immediately attracted to each other. He was infatuated with her and said their interest was chemical. Although both were married, they fell in love. The couple found ways to meet, and Martinez handed all the, handled all the details in order to make sure that they were protected while spending time together. Yolanda was usually there as a chaperone of sorts. Martinez and Selena were trusting of Yolanda, but he was able to see right through her. Martinez thought that Yolanda was dangerous and was jealous of their relationship. See, I think if this affair did take place, that it's totally possible that Yolanda did feel jealous. Martinez also claimed Yolanda felt threatened because she was losing Selena and the power she had over her. Um, when reflecting upon that time, Martinez said he was willing to change his life for her. So again, I can't find really anything 
so she got lipo um i think that they described it her thighs um it doesn't really matter where she got it but yeah he did perform that on her and it was noted in her autopsy that there was bruising from that procedure so little red says i don't believe the doctor and that's the thing it's like we don't have anyone's word except for his that has changed when he's under oath during deposition it's strictly business um it's just it's hard to kind of know for sure i could see yolanda being jealous even if there wasn't an affair i kind of went into detail with that in the beginning of the stream thank you anonymous for the 499 appreciate that um i said earlier like i could see yolanda seeing their dynamic together and being jealous even if they weren't sleeping together personally because it just seemed like she was jealous of anyone who kind of got close to selena at all like you had to go through yolanda to get to her a lot of people have said um all right guys that kind of concludes everything i kind of wanted to go through um you guys aren't buying the affair thank you alex i was saying that this was sort of inspired by um, some clothes I seen Selena wearing. Yeah, she was so young. It really is sad. 23 years old. 23. It's crazy. Oh, Yolanda seemed to be jealous of Selena no matter what. And I think that she was like, obsessed isn't even the word. Like, I think she really did love her, like romantically. Um, had delusions of them like being in a life together and couldn't see her life without Selena there um, and and didn't want Selena to have a life without her by her side. So then this kind of points to her deciding to shoot her. But I do recommend, oh, thank you, Little Red. I do recommend this series if you are a Selena fan, even though um, you could construe some of it as like victim blaming because of this affair, but I just think that it's good to get both sides, the defense's side, and we've always been told the prosecution side and the family side. Um, Yolanda's story really hasn't changed much, but hearing the voice messages from Abraham and Selena that we played earlier, I thought that was interesting. Um, so yeah, if you guys want to watch it, you know, keep in mind that it is Yolanda's side of the story. And you have to kind of take everything with a grain of salt. Who knows what's true? Um, yes, yeah, she is very delusional. Even to this day, um, there was an interview where someone, like I said earlier, had asked her, like, if you had the gun to your own head, you know, once the standoff was taking place, why didn't you just pull the trigger then, you know, after you had done what you did? And she said something along the lines of, um, because... All I could think about was Selena in my head telling me like, no, because if you do that, then we won't be able to see each other in heaven together. And it's like, what? So even after she kills her in her delusional mind, she's thinking I can't shoot myself in the head because Selena won't be able to see me in heaven. And now that's strictly based off of their Catholic faith. Um, that's kind of where that is stemming from as well. But it's just so delusional. Like, why would Selena want to see you in heaven? It's just crazy. But again, guys, I really appreciate you guys being here tonight. So we will talk very soon. Actually, I think Thursday night we'll do the Watts live. And then Friday we'll do another live. Um, I'm thinking that this Adam trial is going to conclude. Today the state rested. And Alex Erickson did a really good recap of today. So if you missed the trial today for Adam Montgomery, for Justice for Harmony Montgomery, definitely check out Alex's stream. She had criminality on and Jen Liu, and they had really good um, insights. I missed most of the trial today because I was editing for this stuff. But what I gathered from their conversation was very useful and informative. So we will talk very soon. Yeah, hit that like button. Thank you to my moderators. And for those who donated, I really appreciate you guys. Um, I could see Susan Smith getting paroled, but not Yolanda. You know, I really hope that that doesn't take place. Um, I just think that over time, people have kind of
grown to know Selena and love her, like even more so than when she passed, um, especially because of the J-Lo movie. But not to bring focus on J-Lo or anything in away from Selena, but that movie was amazing and it, it really kind of displayed um, Selena at her best because it was um, produced by the family, by Abraham too. So again, okay, so any updates on the Cobain case? So I'm hearing that the autopsy was made public. Um, Tom Grant is doing a new series digging into the case to kind of bring more awareness to it. Um, I've watched the first episode. It came out over the weekend. It is on his channel. So Tom Grant's YouTube channel, he's doing like a podcast with um, people related to the case. So it was really interesting. It was only like 45 minutes. I think that was a good amount of time. All right. Yeah. Today is Kurt's birthday. It was today or yesterday. Either way. Yeah. Happy birthday to Kurt. He um, deserves justice too. All right, guys. So we'll talk soon. Awesome. I want to know about Cobain. So I have a playlist that kind of digs into the case. If you haven't seen it, you should definitely check it out. Some of it you have to approve that, you know, the content is um, related to that subject, the way that they're claiming he killed himself. Um, and you have to say that you're 18 and over to watch it. So it's very limited what YouTube will let me cover for that case, unfortunately. So hopefully we get some movement in it, though, like for real. But we'll talk soon, guys. See you later. And thanks again for being here.